Time now for John Clark and Brian Dore with a few, few reflections on Europe's financial woes. Your name is Roger, yes? Roger. Ah, that's your name. Roger. Good. And what do you do, Roger? I'm a financial consultant. Ah, financial consultant, eh? Roger, Yeah, yes. terrific. And uh, Roger, how's business at the moment? Not bad, thank you. Uh, been a bit quiet lately. H how do you mean lately? Since the war, been a bit quiet. Fair enough. OK, Roger, your special subject tonight is the economies of the European community. Mm -hmm. Your time starts now. Best of luck. Thank you. How much does Greece owe, Roger? Uh, $367 billion. Correct. And who do they owe it to? Mostly to the other European economies. Correct. How much does Ireland owe? $865 billion. Correct. And who do they owe it to? Other European economies, mostly. Correct. How much does Spain and Italy owe? One trillion dollars each. Correct. Who to? Mainly France, Britain and Germany. Correct. And how are Germany, France and Britain going, Roger? Well, they're struggling a bit, aren't they? Correct. Why? Well, because they've lent all these vast amounts of money to other European economies that can't possibly pay them back. Correct. So what are they going to do? They're going to have to bail them out. Correct. Where are they getting the money to do that, Roger? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that one. How much does Portugal owe? Hang on a minute. What was the answer to that earlier question? Just keep answering the questions, Roger. Where is Portugal going to get the money it owes to Germany if Germany can't get back the money that it lent to Italy? Just a minute. What was the answer to the previous question? The question was, how can broke economies yes. lend money to other broke economies yes. who haven't got any money because they can't pay back the money the broke economy lent to the other broke economy and shouldn't have lent it to them in the first place because the broke economy can't pay it back. You're wasting very valuable time, Roger. How much money does Spain owe to Italy? $41 billion, but where are they going to get it? Correct. What does Italy owe to Spain? $27 billion, but they haven't got it. They're broke. Correct. How can they pay each other if neither of them has any money? They're going to get a bailout, aren't they? Correct. And where's the money coming from for the bailout? That's what I'm asking you. Correct. Why are people selling the European currency and buying the US dollar? Because the US economy is so much stronger than the European economy. Correct. Why is that, Roger? Because it's owned by China. Correct. And uh, very well done. And after that round, you've lost a million dollars. I've lost a million dollars. I thought you said well done. Yes, well done. You've only lost a million dollars. That's an extraordinary performance, I've Roger. I've only lost a million dollars. Very well done. And that's quite good, is it? Oh, it's excellent. Sell everything immediately. Quickly. I think it's called laughing as you sing. Welcome to End Time Talk Radio, where the truth is usually stranger than fiction. The purpose of these shows are not to scare you, but to prepare you, because what you don't know could hurt you. The word says in Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Thank you for joining us. My name is Julie, and here is the host of the show, Barry Meyer. Hey, welcome to End Time Talk Radio. We have a great show tonight. Uh, with the current things that are happening in our, in our economy, um, I think it's best to have somebody that's talking about uh, with gold and silver, the economic problems we're having in our country, and, and from a Christian's perspective. Now, uh, we have Barry Fredericks from Fort Collins, Colorado, and he has a website called, make sure I say this right, Terrao, um, that's terraowealth.com, that's T E R E O. W E A L T H dot com. Hey, uh, Barry, welcome to End Time Talk Radio. This is the first time I've ever had somebody with my same name in an interview. Oh, thanks, Barry. Appreciate being here. Hey. And, uh, you know, they call me Bear because my business partner has the same first name as you and I. Oh, His really? Name is Barry. Really? Yes. How, how, how often does that happen? Not very often, but I know of five Berries up here right now. Wow, that's it. And in a close uh, proximity. Well, I tell you what, yeah. why don't you go ahead and share about yourself first and then your company, and then we're going to kind of go into gold and silver and different things with the economy. Okay. Well, um, I'm up here in Fort Collins, and I've been selling gold and silver and IRAs for people who are converting their paper into precious metals. I've been doing that for almost a decade now. 
my business partner, Barry, has been doing it even longer. And uh, all in all, I've been talking about this kind of event, what's happening to us these days, for more than three decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been involved in just lots of different things, but I'm always coming back to these end times and gold and silver. And so that's where we get into this. We talk about uh, people having precious metals, gold and silver coins more specifically, and that if you don't have these things in your hands, you don't have them. If you've got paper, Mm -hmm. uh, your wealth is stored in paper. If you don't have it in your hands, you don't really have it, and it can be taken away from you at any time. One of the things I've been hearing people talk about is as if they do buy gold and silver, they've been putting them in even in depositories, and that's not good either, is it? Well, the depositories for the physical gold and silver are certainly secure, but I would think that if the government wanted to start taking possession of those gold and silver assets, that there wouldn't be a lot you could do to stop them. Mm-hmm. And so we talk with people about bringing them home as quickly as possible. Yeah, because uh, I, um, I think it was, um, well, I can't remember who it was. There was some guy that was actually trying to transport gold, and I think he wanted to bring it back uh, back home. But somehow the feds got to it, and they stopped it, and, and now it's no longer his because uh, he never took possession of it. That can certainly be a consideration. Because that could happen. Yeah. Um, well, tell us about your company and, and you know how people can contact you and you know through the phone number and that. Okay. Well, as you mentioned, our name is Tereo T E R E O Wealth Strategist, and our website is Tereo Wealth dot com. Mm-hmm. I'll spell it out. It's T E R E O. W e a l t h dot com, and we're by appointment only up here in, or down here in Fort Collins, Colorado, and our local phone number is nine seven zero six seven two three eight three seven. Or if they wanted to call us on the eight hundred number, it's eight seven seven two nine zero nine four. Nine six, and I hope we'll get to repeat that later on, so that those people who didn't have paper and pencil handy could uh, catch up with it then. Yeah, definitely, we'll have people do that because being local here um, definitely be helpful. Um, with you being local, for people that are in this area of, of like Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado, what makes it nice is that they can meet you, you know, face to face. They're not dealing with a company on the other side of the of the country or somewhere in the world. Um, now, if a person wants to meet with you, how, how do you do that? How do, how, do you, yeah, how do you get a person that doesn't even know anything about gold and silver? How do you get them to understand the value of that? Well, one of the things we talk about is how gold and silver's purchasing power always remains the same, but the price of it is always changing because when you see the price, What it's really expressing is the value of your dollars and how they are changing. And so when the value of your dollar goes down, then the price of gold and silver go up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at at, uh, some of our displays, we talked to people about how in 1963, and the only reason why I picked that year is because it's 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And in 1963, with a quarter... I could go to the filling station and get a gallon of gasoline, a gallon of premium gasoline, for less than a quarter. And I frequently have people tell me, yeah, it was only 19 cents a gallon back then. Mm -hmm. Well, that's correct. So you could buy it with a quarter and have change. So today, if we take that 1963 quarter, which is 90% silver, it's worth over $4. I can still buy a gallon of premium gasoline with it and have change left over. With gold, we talk about the same thing, except that we picked 100 years ago. 
1913. And it's just an easy round number, 100 years ago. So in 1913, I could take a $20 gold piece, whether it was a Liberty or a St. Gaudens, a double eagle, or I could take a $20 bill because they were both valued at the same. And I could go to the mercantile or general store and I could buy a suit of clothes. And then I could go down to the livery and buy myself a horse. Or I could go to the, the gunsmith or still that same general store and probably buy myself a pistol. Well, today, we're 100 years later, with that $20 gold piece, it's worth over $1,600. And I can still buy the same suit of clothes, and I can still buy a horse, or I can buy a handgun. But my $20 bill will just barely buy dinner and is only worth $0.04 cents in 1913 dollars. So if you want to protect your assets and protect your wealth. Some of it better be in gold and silver because that doesn't change value where your dollar does. You know, I don't think people understand, you know, if it's written on, you know, the, the dollar bill, it's worth the paper it's written on. People don't understand. Um, well, of course, we're at that meeting here um, Friday with Mike McCune um, where he was holding up a piece of paper and a dollar bill. What's the difference? It's still paper. People have been ingrained so much that that little piece of paper is worth money, but actually the Constitution says differently, doesn't it? That's right. Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution says that the real money is going to be gold and silver. And we've gotten away from that, and because we're not being taught that kind of information in school anymore, then people can be easily deceived about what's going on. And that's really happening quite a bit. You know, they're even show, you know, they're not teaching us stuff in schools. Matter of fact, Barry, I've had to learn a lot of this stuff just by doing the radio show, coming across information and, and meeting people like you to understand what's going on because um if you listen to the 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 news, they'll tell you differently and they'll say, you know, gold's been going down like a lead balloon, but they don't understand or people that watch it don't understand that when they talk about the gold and silver, it's really based on paper gold and silver and so the value of gold and silver is a lot more I, I don't know how to explain it any better than what the federal what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep the price of gold down so people don't think it's valuable valuable well that's absolutely right uh, people are saying to me weekly that well the price has really gone down but what they don't understand is that the price of gold and silver is manipulated downward by our government through large banks, and it was a little more than a month ago that some whistleblowers for J.P. Morgan Chase said that the government and their, their leaders, their supervisors and management tell them on a daily basis to manipulate the price of gold and silver downward. Now, this accomplishes a couple of things. One is that for these banks that want to buy gold and silver, they can buy it at cheaper prices. Mm -hmm. But it also tells the world that the dollar is getting stronger, and so the dollar needs to remain the world reserve currency. That may not last much longer. You know, I've heard that China now is, is bought like, I think, and I think you told me, somewhere around 7,000 tons of gold or something like that. Yes, China, it's been reported, has purchased 7,100 tons of gold this year. That's almost an equivalent to three and a half years worth of the world's gold production. Now, China frequently doesn't tell us what they're going to do until after they have already done it. Last week, I saw a report that said that China may have actually purchased five times that much gold. And if they have that gold and they're using it to back up their currency so that their currency could eventually be redeemable in gold, that may diminish the value of the dollar dramatically. And we could see really serious times. And, uh, you know, when I'm at work and I try to explain to you about their 401k and how it's just not really there, it's, 
it's just numbers. There's nothing there that's really backing it up. How do you get people to understand that there's no value in their 401k, really? Well, one of the things I tell folks about is if my wife had a 401k from working at a bank for 15 years, and in September of 2008, she lost more than 50% of it. Yeah. At the same time, just a little less than two months later, one of my clients, an attorney, took his his money and rolled his IRA over into a precious metals IRA. And at Halloween 2008, so five years ago this time, he rolled a million dollars over into his IRA. And it's worth over four million dollars today, and it's all in silver. Wow, that, you know that's just amazing. Now I heard when Germany had their problems, um, those who had gold could actually literally, after things got better, they could literally go down and buy a block, a city block with a one coin because the value had gone up so much. Oh, that's absolutely true. Their paper Dutch marks were worthless. And they could use them to light a fire. There were stories of people taking their Dutch marks in wheelbarrows and rolling them around the streets. And if they went into a store, they might come back and find the wheelbarrow is gone and the Dutch marks are sitting there. Mm -hmm. The inflation rate was 115% a day. And if we tone that down a little bit to just 100% a day, then it means that the... $3 $3 gasoline you're buying today is $6 tomorrow morning and $12 the day after and $24 a gallon the day after that. Employers were paying their employees twice a day in 1923 Germany so that those people would have enough value in their paycheck to be able to go and buy groceries to live. You know, they're talking now, 2014, we're going to have our voting, you know, we're going to vote for the midterm elections. The way things are going uh, with February 15th of 2014 coming up, uh, I don't think with the economy, with what they did, I don't think they kicked the can down the road. I think they literally smashed it into the ground. Um, That being said, I don't know if we're going to have elections because the economy may be in such shambles. The government may have us in martial law. That's certainly possible, and it looks like this administration is working hard to uh, eliminate the Constitution. They don't seem to, by my own opinion here, they Mm -hmm. don't seem to follow the law except when it's convenient for them. Yeah. We may not have those elections. Who knows what's going to happen? Well, and then... It could be the end times, too. Yeah, and they're pushing immigration reform now. That's not good either. That's true. And they've been, the administration's been talking about making Puerto Rico the 51st state. And Puerto Rico, as I understand it, doesn't want to become a state. They prefer to remain a territory and free and independent. But this could sure bring an awful lot of. Uh, voters into the system who would probably vote in a direction different from what you and I would do, mm-hmm. and it would bring about an awful, awful lot of uh, welfare and food stamps and everything like that. I don't see where that'd be real good for us, but that's just one of the many ideas going on. Uh, one of the other things that's been bothering me quite a bit was that And we learned this back in 2009, that the company that runs the voting machines, the electronic voting machines, Mm -hmm. is based out of Florida, and it's a wholly owned subsidiary of a Spanish company, and this owner of the Spanish company is a very good friend of our president and supports him financially. So maybe we might see some voting irregularities. And if that's the case, what can we do right now to prevent that from happening? Yeah, you know, there's so much that's going on. We hear everything from Acorn to you name it. Um, 
and I, you know, sometimes people don't understand all these different things that are going on. They hear a roadie show in passing. For people to really understand, they really have to almost daily look at the news, daily talk to people. Um, it can't be a passing thing because they can get so tied up in their work and daily life, they kind of don't see the signs of what's happening in our country and the world. Well, that, that's so true. And, you know, I, I read alternative media mm-hmm. all the time. 40, 40 hours a week I'm on the Internet. I'm reading information from every source I can find. And if I read something that's a little outrageous, then I'll go and look for a source to see if it's reported somewhere else so that I know that I'm giving accurate information. One of the things that concerns me right now is the problems with the Fukushima reactors yep. in Japan. And from what I've been reading, they've been losing over 300 tons a day of radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. Well, what's that going to do to the aquatic life there? When is it going to be reaching the Pacific coast of the United States? And what kind of dangers and death are we going to see from that? And there are reports that it's already reaching here that some of the fish that's being caught in the Pacific are radioactive and that deformities are taking place. How do we prepare for that? Hmm. And how do we prepare for the other things that are coming too? Uh, Again, I'm going back to the economy, gold and silver. It's always got wealth or value. So how do you protect yourself from an economic collapse? And that gold and silver will be part of it, which will allow you to purchase almost anything you need if it's available and you know how to horse trade or barter. Yeah, there's a lot of things that um, people can be diversified in, not only gold and silver, but they can do food, ammo, guns, different things like that. Um, When people start getting into gold and silver, do they ask you for other directions, for ideas how to maybe prepare themselves? Oh, absolutely. They're always asking us how they can prepare and what they should do. Uh, if people would go to our website, and I'll remind you now that it's www.tereowell, P-E-R-E-O-W-E-A-L-T-H.com. There's a free 40-page book they can download, and it answers 20 important questions, but it also has a couple of reports about preparation and how to prepare yourself for what may be coming. And so uh, people can go there. We talk to folks about how you should get all your money out of a bank and you're going to have cash, some cash at home, hidden away, but we call it mattress money, and you only want to have about three to six months' worth of that. Then... In the bank, you would keep a month's worth of cash, and you use that for paying your bills, like if you're using bill pay or you're writing checks or you're using debit cards and credit cards. Well, then you've got enough cash to take care of you for a month, but you don't keep any more in there than you can afford to lose. And so you've you've got the bank and that month's worth. You've got three to six months' worth of cash at home. Then you've got some more cash, and you're going to use that for buying gold and silver, but not exclusively. Uh, You mentioned the ammunition and food. Mm -hmm. I get a little more detailed and talk to people about, uh, you know, maybe tobacco and and whiskey and Mm -hmm. chocolate bars and anything that you might be able to trade with, medicine or toiletries or coffee. So, Put that kind of stuff away so that you can use it to survive on, but you can also barter with it when the time comes because there will be a great transfer of wealth that will take place, and this is going to happen from those who are not prepared who have something that they have to sell to be able to get by to the, to the folks that were prepared or who are prepared and have something to barter with. It reminds me of a conversation I had with one of my clients in Nebraska who's a rancher, and he said he was talking with uh, 
another rancher, and they were talking about the hard times and how it may be coming. And my client was saying, well, you know, I don't know how to prepare to take care of my ranch and farm. So he called me up one night, and we started talking it over. He told me that his taxes are $20,000 a year on his ranch. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you get down to it, you never own real estate. You only lease it, and you lease it from the county. Because if you don't pay your property taxes, they'll take it away and sell it. So I suggested that when my client could afford it, he might buy $200,000 worth of silver so that he's got enough to take care of his ranch for the next 10 years. Hmm. Now, he thought that was an awful lot of money, but at the same time, as we think it out, there's going to be the people who are going to lose their farms and ranches, and so he'll be able to buy his neighbor's farms and ranches for pennies on the dollar. And this isn't a greedy thing. What it's doing is buying those farms so that his neighbors can continue to live in their property and continue to make a living so that maybe there's enough to pay the taxes and at least break even yeah, and be able to help them out that way. But as we have inflation, then the price of that gold and silver is going to go up or the value of that gold and silver is going to go up. And so you could have $200,000 worth of silver, but let's say that its price goes from $20 to $200. Well, now you've got 10 times as much value, and you can pay that $20,000 with one-tenth of what you would have, that $20,000 a year in taxes. You can pay it with $200 worth of silver instead of $2,000 worth of silver. You know, the last stats I think I've seen is like um, 48% of Americans now are on food stamps, and today is October 31st of 2013. Tomorrow is November 1st. And food stamps will be reduced. I can't remember somewhere from thirty-five to sixty-five dollars. I've heard two different numbers. What 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 are you hearing about riots and stuff like that? The people like, why are they take my money away? I need that money to survive. Well, sure, and that's the reason why you have gold and silver in your possession because it makes it much harder to take away. But we've been hearing for more than a month now that Homeland Security, besides buying guns and ammunition and and preparing their forces, they're talking about manning the streets around government buildings in some of the northeastern states, such as New York and Virginia and, and uh, New Jersey, and acting as security outside of those facilities in case people should riot tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And... Fortunately, where we live, there's not a huge population. It's not a population center like New York City. Yeah. But when we watch people have the mob mentality, then they'll clean out a grocery store in a matter of minutes. You're not going to find any food if they get angry, and the police aren't strong enough to stop them. They'll run the police down. And even if the police started shooting, what are they, how are they going to justify killing a bunch of people? Where do you, or you can't arrest them, where are you going to put them? Or is that what the FEMA camps are for? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it could be real ugly tomorrow. I've got my tanks full <laughs> and in my car, and I don't know what's coming. But I just try to be prepared as much as I can and listen to the Holy Spirit to guide me. Yeah. You know, um, you know, jumping off that and now going into January 1st of 2014, we have uh, the Dodd-Frank bill come into effect where it makes people that are in the bank accounts unsecured creditors. Maybe you want to explain that a little bit. Well, and it's already that way mm -hmm. in that if we put money into a bank, what we are doing is loaning the bank our money. It's no longer ours. It is now an unsecured loan. And if the bank should go bankrupt, they're not the ones that are going to give us any money back. That's going to be the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is a government agency. And so they're going to take 
our tax dollars and use them to pay back the losses from these bad banks. And I don't agree with that at all. But at the same time, the way to avoid it is not put your money in the bank. Yeah. You know, my the silver that I may have in my possession is up over 25% this year in the last four months. Well, that's better than any bank's going to pay me. Oh, it definitely. It keeps up with inflation. And what a lot of people don't think about, and I'm going to use an exaggerated number here, but let's say that a bank or savings and loan or credit union or something else is paying you 5% a year interest on the on your deposits, on the money that you've loaned them. Well, if inflation's 10%, you're still 5% backwards. Wouldn't it be better to at least break even with inflation and have it in your hands and have it in a, in a store of wealth that you have access to that cannot be taken away from you? Mm-hmm. So I, it, it's certainly an important concern that I don't trust anybody that can take this stuff away from me. Yeah. And, yeah. That's yeah. just where I go. Well, I, I guess it's so frustrating because, I mean, there's people at work. They understand what's going on to a point. They understand things are not right. And one guy said to me, you know, he's not a good Christian. He said, you know, um, I'm telling people right now, they don't believe me, but you're, if you go to the grocery store and go shopping, people are going to rob you when you come out. He, and, you know, the guy's not a Christian or nothing. Um, I, don't, I, I guess what frustrates me Barry, is that, you know, how many times do you talk to people and it's like talking to a wall? All the time. Yeah. All, all the time. You know, one of the things that I do is I go to gun shows on weekends and I have my table and my display up and I have a, a dry erase board that tells you what the price of gold and silver closed down on Friday afternoon. It shows you what the percentage rate of increase in those two metals over the lowest point this year. Mm-hmm. And then I talk about other things, or I'll put up little snippets about things like Syria is not about chemical weapons, it's about money. Mm-hmm. Or that uh, China's buying every ounce of gold they can get their hands on, and they're followed closely by India and Russia. Or that the bankers don't, they will tell you that they don't like gold. And yet, the Bank of International Settlement in Switzerland, which settles bank accounts between nations, uses nothing but gold coins to do this. So, on one side, they're telling us, no, don't get gold. And on the other side, that is exactly what they use to settle bank accounts with. Mm -hmm. And we put that information out there. We put it in our blogs. And again, you go to our website, terrailwealth.com. And we've got our blogs up there. You join our mailing list. We'll send the blogs to you so that you can read them as they come out. And this information is at our booth, but it's hard to get people to look us in the eyes or to look at our display and ask us questions. Mm -hmm. We almost have to chase them down because it's what I call the ostrich mentality. Yeah. I know that ostriches don't really bury their heads, but it seems like that's what we do is we bury our heads, and it's more important to find out what the Denver Broncos did or what the basketball team is doing or what's going on with American Idol than to search out the news and find out what is really going on and to read your Bible and read about what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I know there is people that ask some questions. One of the things I've started doing is actually calling the local radio station and just saying things about what I'm seeing in the news, whatever. And I can't remember what I brought up. Oh, I did bring up the Dodd Frank bill. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, he says, well, okay, well, thank you very much for sharing. I'm like, didn't you just hear, I just told you it's almost like, well, that was nonchalantly said, but it's nothing that we're really concerned about. And I'm like, you know, guys, you know, do you understand what's coming down? Because, I mean, the 401 ks of pensions are all going away. I did an interview with a guy last week. His wife is from Poland. 
and you know they lost fifty percent of their uh, pensions or, or something like that over there. And that's right. That's and, right. Yeah, and people don't realize that at least for my what I believe is that Cyprus was to see what the American people would do if they took people's money from over there. They didn't do nothing. That's right. They did not do anything. And chances are we're very good that we're not going to do anything. If you watch what goes on in Detroit and their bankruptcy proceedings, they're saying that pensioners from the city of Detroit, so this could be police department, fire department, emergency medical services, the utility workers, anybody that worked for the city of Detroit, they're only going to get 16 cents on a dollar. Mm -hmm. That's approximately one-sixth of their retirement is going to come from the city where it used to be close to 100%. That's part of the reason why bankruptcy is so good for municipalities is because they can get rid of all their outstanding debt, their unfunded liabilities. Yeah. Um, that happened with General Motors. Mm -hmm. you know, the unions took it over. Well, now it's owned by China, but the the people that had pensions and retirements from General Motors, those were unfunded liabilities. They couldn't afford it. And so that was part of the reason why the bankruptcy was so effective for General Motors. Mm -hmm. and, because they got rid of the pensions. And, you know, anymore, it seems like the stock market has been divorced from the economy because of the bailout that the government did. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just... Yeah. It's just crazy because people look at the stock market and I hate they're doing good. I mean, I work for a Fortune 500 company. It's one of the top 500 companies in uh, America. And, hey, stock, I think our stock was 109 today. Uh, people can look up it as ARG. But, um, you know, the thing is, you know, we're, we're, we think we're doing so well. But, my gosh, when the, when the carpet gets pulled out, people are going to be stunned. True. And let's say you've got a million dollars in your stock, in mm -hmm. your corporation, and what happens if it all collapses tomorrow? What do you have that you can hold in your hand? A piece of paper? Yeah, and $109. If it was only $100, then that's, uh, what, about 10,000 shares? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's great. Go to Starbucks and say, I had, had 10,000 shares of stock. Can I buy a cup of coffee? And they said, sure, for five bucks. Yeah. But uh, if you don't have it in your hands, you don't have it. I, I don't know if you ever watched Glenn Beck. Oh, yeah. I have a subscription to his premium network. And so Lori Q uh, did a, a news report, of, you know, maybe two months ago about how on September 11th, funny how that day keeps coming back, September 11th, 2008, was when Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. And what she reported was that that was a Internet attack on the economy of the United States. Mm -hmm. The Pentagon, the Department of Defense, believes that it was uh, brought on us by China and Russia. And the reason why Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers went bankrupt is because in three days' time, $545 billion in naked short sales were dropped on the stock market, and so that money disappeared. You know, and you mentioned... People's that, retirement account disappeared. Yeah, and uh, people don't understand that. They, they I, well, <laughs> um, people believe the government more than they'll believe a person trying to tell them the truth. True. You know, they when you really believe what they want to believe. Well, and that's true. They don't know what the truth is anymore. You know, when you were talking about, uh, you know, Glenn Beck, you know, he talks about that, you know, he professed Mormon. You know, I think he's bringing some great stuff up. But where is the professed church that's supposed to be talking about the stuff that he's talking about? Well, and that's the Black Robe Regiment. There. Yep. How come the pastors aren't talking about these kinds of things. Uh, one of the things that bothers me is I've been reading the little book of Jude, and it talks about it in Second Peter also, that 
in these end times, there will be great deceptions, and there will be false teachers, and we have to know what the truth is so that we don't fall prey to those false teachings. Mm-hmm. And I see that happening all the time. Mm. Um, my partner and I, sometimes we talk about the news, and then we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Yeah. And, you know, if if you got into Revelation 16, 2 or 3, something like that, and it talks about the angels pouring out their bowls, and one of the things that's been bothering me a whole lot lately, and I'll go back to Fukushima, 300 tons of radioactive water are being leaked into the Pacific Ocean every day of the week, every week of the year, and it's been going on for more than a year now. Well, in that Revelation 16, 2 and 3, the second bowl and the third bowl, as they're being poured out, the oceans turn red. Well, in one analysis, it could be that that red means blood, which means death. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how all the creatures of the sea will be dead. The seas will be lifeless. Do you think that could be happening because of Fukushima? Could be. And if so, are we that far along in the book of Revelations right now? And if we are, when are we going to wake up? Because, folks, we got a problem here. Well, you know, and it, it, you know, one of the things I had mentioned when you were talking about the Black Rope Regiment, there's a congressman um, out of Washington State um, named Matt Shea. Um, he's actually the running run of the county, one of the counties, you know, representing the state. Um, however you put that, but anyways, um, in the legislature of the state of Wyoming of Washington, um, you know. He, they said last year. He said they had to. Do, he had to literally defend the Second Amendment. He says there was not a single pastor that was backing the Second Amendment. They were backing gun control, and he had to literally come up through the Bible and actually go through and say, "This is what the Bible says about natural law of your protection of yourself." And there was not a single. He, there was not a single pastor that was willing to stand up for the people's rights. Well, and could it be that pastors have been bought off and fallen prey to the same problems the rest of us have, that they haven't been on their guard enough, that, well, we're just going to have this terrible mess? It's almost like um, the pastors have become their little CEOs, their little church companies. Well, yeah. That doesn't do anybody any good, now does it? No, because if the government says it, they make the God, the government not make, you know, God make the God, the government God, instead of making God God. Yeah. Well, and so, like for giving donations to churches these mm-hmm. days, I normally am doing it in cash, so that. There's no check, there's no reporting, there's no tracking. But at the same time, if I'm going to trust in God completely, do I need a tax rebate from the federal government? No. You know, one of the things that I put on my bulletin board or my dry erase board at the gun show for last weekend was that what well, came from Proverbs 22.3, and it says, a prudent person foresees the danger ahead and takes precautions. Yes. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. That's where we are right now. And that doesn't just apply to you and me and the listeners. It's going to apply to the, the teachers and the pastors, too. And that those pastors are supposed to be teaching us and getting us prepared. And uh, I don't know if they're really doing that. I'm not going to judge them, because I mentioned earlier about the book of Jude. There's a passage in there where it talks about how Archangel Michael is having an argument with Satan over Moses' body. 
Mm-hmm. And the archangel Michael says to Satan that God rebuke you. Yeah. I cannot say anything else. And so that's where I am in thinking and talking about pastors. May God rebuke you. Yeah, I mean, they're the ones that are supposed to be leading the people, not down uh, the broad path of um, H-E double hockey sticks that are that that's going on right now. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's just sad, you know, And but there's people that are waking up out of the church, you know, and when I was down there in uh, Wellington with you uh, two weeks two weeks ago, I think it was, we had a great conversation. I mean, we just we just uh, we sat there and we talked about all kinds of stuff, and that's why I wanted to come on. And like, well, I just hooked up with somebody that was just easy to talk to. Well, it's like we were old friends, even if it was our first time to meet. Yeah, that's how it was. It, it was, um, you know, and and so, you know, we had so much in common to talk about, and you know, we could sit here for hours and talk about all the different things and. You know, I am. I, you know, I keep coming across more and more people that are um, are standing for our rights. And I was going to ask you: Have you heard of the American Redoubt? No, I don't believe I'm familiar with that at all. Well, it's based on a book, and I don't have it in front of me. But um, they it's consistent of um, it consists of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, where there's a lot of Christians. And patriots that are actually moving there right now, a massive amount of them. And they were doing a news report on CBN that actually said there was 180 gun manufacturers in Idaho alone. Well, I could certainly believe that in a few in Montana. And I know of a few others also. And so that's, that's neat. Yeah. Uh, my, my only concern... And, uh, you know, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. And so these are my vanities showing up. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that uh, Yellowstone National Park has the United States' only super volcano. Mm-hmm. And uh, in seismic terms, it's growing rapidly. Several inches a year of uplift going on right now. They say the seismologists and other experts, maybe volcanologists, that it's growing at an extremely fast rate as far as volcanoes go. And that if it should blow, there's going to be 10 feet of ash over everything for a thousand miles in every direction. Yeah. Well, so that makes me think that I don't want to move to Idaho. I don't want to go to Montana, but I might certainly consider Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it blows and we're still in this mess and the Lord hasn't returned, I'm going to need a place to work from. Yeah. You know, and I don't know the answer. I mean, I do know that there's people like you and like me that are seeking out other people to link up with because... Um, we have a lot of people out there that have no clue what's going on, and those are the ones that are going to be the simpletons that are going to, you know, the consequences are going to come upon them. Um, do you are you finding more people that you can hook up with that like me and you did? Ah, uh, yes. I normally don't talk about them too much, sure, because I try to keep them all separated so that I can't tell if if something happens to me. I can't talk because I don't know anything. Yeah. It's putting it all in cells in little groups so that I protect all the people I come in contact with. Yeah. I understand that. I I understand what you're talking about. I I do come across those and don't mention too much myself. Um, As we're winding down here, here next 10 minutes or so, uh, you know, I was going to ask you about, um, I hear people not only talk about gold and silver, but they also talk about, and this might be some that some question that somebody might have, but about platinum and palladium. What are your thoughts on those two? Well, I normally avoid those. Mm-hmm. And the main reason why is that although they may have great wealth, they're industrial metals. And if I gave somebody a platinum coin or a platinum round, would they know what it looks like? Mm-hmm. How do you know I'm not ripping you off? 
So I tell people to stay away from all the other forms of precious metals except for gold and silver because that's been man's uh, form of money. That's God's money, and it's been that way for 6,000 years. So don't try to come up with something new because it's liable to fail, sort of like bitcoins. Yeah. Uh, the government's really cracking down on that. Doesn't seem like it's a wise idea. And uh, another thing in, in here is that I always tell folks not to get gold and silver bars. Stay away from bars. And the main reason is because there are counterfeit ones out there. Mm -hmm. So how do you know you've got the real thing? And even though, as some people have told me, well, I know the guy I bought him from, and he's real trustworthy. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. But there are jewelers in Manhattan who I would consider to be experts on this who have found out that the gold and silver bars that they bought that had hallmarks on them of, of uh, Engelhart or Johnston Matthey turned out that those were counterfeit bars. And when they drilled into them or started melting them down, uh, inside the silver bars it was lead and inside the gold bars it was tungsten yep. so if the experts are being fooled what's to keep you from being fooled and at the same time looking forwards into the future if you should happen to need to barter with your bars you've got to sell the person you're talking with into believing that those bars are real because the average person, even one out of a thousand, it may know how big a bar of gold or silver is supposed to be, how much it's supposed to weigh, and how do you check for the purity of it if you can't assay it. And you can have an assay report, and it doesn't mean anything. It's just a piece of paper. Mm. So yeah. always go with coins, and not rounds, not medallions but coins that were issued by a government so that you can be confident in what you're dealing with and the person that you're selling to in the future is going to be confident in what they're dealing with. That's yeah. for your own protection. Yeah, I was going to ask you on, on, on that bullion because I've seen it. I've seen those before, and, of course, you know, what do you do with those? I mean, and so it looks kind of – I came across uh, – two bars um, somewhere they were uh, a gram each and look kind of cool but I don't know what am I going to do with a, with a gold bar at least a coin I have a better idea true and one of the things that was introduced to me a few weeks back at a show was this guy who was uh, working with a multi-level marketing company and there's nothing wrong with multi-level marketing but in this case they were selling these little credit cards if you could, they look like a credit card. They weren't truly a credit card at all, but encased in a little plastic vial embedded in these cards was what was supposed to be one gram of silver, mm -hmm. or in this case, it was gold. Okay, that's kind of neat, but uh, me being the skeptic, how do I know that that's one ounce or one gram of pure gold? And how do I prove it? Mm -hmm. and you want to sell these things to me, that's that's interesting, and you want me to sell these things for people because you're making a lot of profit in it. Well, if you're making a lot of profit, then it means somebody's paying a high price. And so I calculated out on the current day's value for gold and silver that that one gram should be worth about $31, mm -hmm. and he wanted to sell it to me for sixty-three dollars, well, that's where his great profit is coming from. But someone's getting ripped off in here, and you know, my partner and I—we don't go into a lot of advertising. We don't spend a lot of money doing that, like some of the guys on television, because somebody's got to pay for that advertising, and it's not fair to pass it all off on to our customers. So. We back off from doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I tend to think of myself as a farmer for God. God told me to go out and plant seeds. He told me to plant good seeds in healthy ground 
and I would have a good and prosperous harvest. Now, I also tend to believe that there's got to be a reciprocal to that. And the opposite of that would be that if I plant bad seeds, I'm liable to get a harvest out of that also. And I really don't want a bad harvest. It doesn't mean that somebody buying from me is going to pay for my uh, grandkids' summer camp or anything like that because I'm not in the business of ripping people off. But I am in the business of telling you the truth and telling you the absolute truth as I know it and understand it and as I can research it because I want a good harvest, and the Lord will provide that for me as long as I tell the truth and plant good seeds. Even on this interview, I'm planting seeds right mm-hmm. now, and I want them to be good seeds. Yeah. Well, do you think that, you know, um, things are eventually going to get better here, or do you think that's going to gonna keep getting worse for a while, or do you think American people are going to stand up and say no more? I would hope and pray that the American people will stand up and say no more, but I don't think there's enough people that know what the truth is and that we're so multifaceted, going in so many different directions that it'll be hard for us to all go in the direction that we need to go in. Sure. I would think also that what's going on in our nation is not an accident. It's by plan. It's by design. And that in this process, it was started by Satan thousands of years ago. And that he's working towards a goal. And we know what that is. That's worship of him and having a one-world government. It's like the Tower of Babel being rebuilt all over again, except it's called maybe the United Nations or the New World Order or something on that or that effect. But that, I think, is the absolute plan. It is to bring down the economy of the United States so that the rest of the world will have to collapse also. And out of the ashes, a new phoenix bird is going to arise, something like that. Mm-hmm. But that's not biblical. I don't know what's going to happen. Right now, I don't expect it to get better, and I don't really expect the United States, as we have known her and loved her, to continue to exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know that's awfully negative and cynical, but that's the way I tend to see it right now. And unless the Lord comes quick and changes everything, this uh, new awakening, uh, we're in a world of hurt. Yeah, for sure. Well, I know there is people that are waking up. Um, we'll just have to trust God and see what what He does for us. Um, well, true. We have to wake up as many people as we can in the process. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's um, go ahead and go through your company again and uh, tell people about how to contact you in that. Okay. Well, we're Terrell Wealth Strategists. We're in Fort Collins, Colorado, and. They can find us on the website at www.tereo, that's T-E-R-E-O, or phonetically Thomas Edward Robert Edward Ocean, and uh, well, W-E-A-L-T-H, so terealwealth.com, and uh, they can reach us either on our website or they can call us on our phone numbers. Our local number is area code 970-672-3837. Or our toll-free number is 877-290-9496. And so they can reach us that way. We can set up an appointment. Some people don't like coming to our office because uh, we're in a bank building in Fort Collins. And if you come to a, the office to meet us, then it pretty well tells anybody that's observing that you're there to talk about gold and silver. So sometimes we go and meet in coffee shops at a Perkins or, or Denny's or something like that. 
so that it's not so obvious what's going on. Oh. We're happy to do that, and we're, we work hard to protect your privacy and, and to keep people from knowing what's happening. You know, Tereo is a New Testament Greek term, which means to be an overseer and a protector, an observer. And so that's what we're doing is we're watching, we're observing, and we're trying to protect people and help them. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I really appreciate you, you know, having your time and, you know, doing this because people just need no ways of how to prepare. Um, and especially there's a lot of people I know in this region, so they can be directed to you. So I hope a lot of people will go to your business and definitely, um, you know, get in touch with you. Now, can you also go to people's homes too? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When, uh, my rancher friend that I spoke of earlier, yeah. when he purchased his, his coins, his gold coins and silver coins, I, that may have been over the phone. He may have done a wire transfer to me, but I delivered the coins to his facility and nobody knew I was coming. It was all very discreet and private. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't want a Brinks armored car showing up at your front door. Yeah. But having a guy in an old pickup truck show up, uh, that's another story. Sure, sure. So we try to keep it discreet. Barry, any, any final, uh, final parting words? Well, I just uh, pray the blessings of the Lord over all the listeners and all the people who are involved in this and that, um, you know, wake other people up. And if there's something I can do to help them and assist them in any way, I welcome their calls or their emails to uh, let me try to help, however that may be, in the name of Jesus. 